Hello and welcome to you, my finance teacher. Today we're going to talk about dot plots, which is a way to summarize data, a way to represent data in a relatively brief format. You can often see dot plots mentioned on the news, especially in relation to the central bank, in relation to the Federal Reserve, the Fed, in relation to the interest rates set by the central bank. Here are a few examples from Bloomberg, for example, in March this year, 2022, we see a reference to dot plots. Another example from Economist Every Day, a reference to dot plot, that's from April this year, 2022. An example from CNBC from April this year as well, a bit of a reference to the Fed's dot plot on the news. And another example from BNN Bloomberg, again from April this year, a reference to Fed's dot plot. So it is a pretty common chart, especially in finance and macroeconomics in relation to uh, the Federal Reserve and the interest rates. And as I mentioned, it's a way to summarize data. Another way to summarize data is frequency distribution. And there is a difference between a frequency distribution and a dot plot, even though they both are ways of summarizing data. Here's an example of frequency distribution table at the top, where we have a class with a given number of students, and the table shows how many of the students got grades between uh, 26 to 41, between 42 to 57, and so on. We see, for example, there was only one student who got a grade between 90 and 100, and 14 students who got the grades between 74 and 89. Instead of looking at the raw data of several dozen students, it's much easier to comprehend, to understand what the data is about from this sort of frequency distribution table, which summarizes the data. But the problem is some of the exact grades, some of the exact values of particular individual observations are lost. Uh, for example, out of these 13 students who got the grades between 58 and 73, we don't really know what are the individual grades of each of these 13 students. Contrary to that, dot plot, while it is also a way to summarize data, with a dot plot there is a no data loss. No exact values of individual observations are lost in a dot plot, because dot plot shows each observation as a dot. And if observations have the same value, they are simply piled up on top of each other in a line whether in a vertical line, as in this example, or in a horizontal line, which is often shown in relation to the Fed's interest rates. In this example, we see a dot plot of how many minutes it takes to eat a breakfast, and we see that the largest number of people, which is seven in this case, take 10 minutes to eat breakfast, whereas the second largest group, six people, takes less than one minute, zero minutes, to eat that breakfast. And we see that data is split into two clusters with up to five minutes spent on eating breakfast and between eight and 12 minutes spent on eating breakfast. This is an example of how dot plot illustrates the data. It would be more confusing to look at a raw data of, again, several dozen people and the times they take to eat breakfast. Before looking at the Fed's example of a dot plot, let's see how do we create our own in Excel. Say you have a repair shop where vehicles come for repair and you have this monthly data of 30 observations, 30 days in a month, with a number of vehicles coming for repair on each of these days. The numbers of vehicles range anywhere from 0 to 6. First, before we create a dot plot, let's sort this data by the variable of interest. In this case, what I'm interested in is the number of vehicles serviced per day. So I'm going to click anywhere within this data, hit Control A, go to the Data tab and sort. Select Vehicles here and click OK, which allows me to sort all of this data by the number of vehicles serviced from smallest to the largest number. Next, I want to count how many times each of these numbers is represented. For that, I'm going to use a count if formula. And to make things easy to automate the naming of the chart, I'm just going to give it a name dot plot of vehicles serviced. 
And let's zoom in so you can see a little better. I'm going to hit equal, count if, open the brackets, click on the variable of interest, semicolon, click on the variable of interest again, comma, and click on the variable of interest again. Go back to the first entry, hit F4 to have these dollar values before the column and row. You can do that by hand. You can enter these dollar values by hand. Click on the second value after the semicolon. Hit F4 three times to place the dollar sign before the column. Again, you can do that by hand. Close the bracket and hit Enter. Click again on that cell. Move the mouse to the edge until you see this black cross and double click to copy this formula. Zoom out and you will see that this formula counts the number of times the value repeats such that count increases from one to the maximum number of times the number of vehicles repeat. And what we do next is we select two columns, one for the variable of interest and one for our count for the dot plot and insert a scatter plot. In this case, we are illustrating the dot plot, the number of vehicles served, so I do not need the legend. To utilize space efficiently, I'm going to go to layout and get rid of the legend. I might want to increase the size of this chart again to utilize the space better. Perhaps I want to get rid of the largest value on the vertical axis number seven here as there are no observations, as there are no dots at the seventh level. And perhaps I want to get rid of this value zero either. And to do that, I click on the vertical axis, double click it. And for the minimum value, I'm going to enter one as fixed. And for the maximum value, I'm going to enter six as fixed. What this does is it introduces 0.5 as a step shown on the grid line. I want to get rid of that as I don't count halves of vehicles. Again, double click on the vertical axis. And for the major, we're going to fix it to one instead of 0.5 and close. So what do we see here? We see that zero vehicles on the horizontal axis. We have our variable of interest, which was vehicles. Zero vehicles were served on two occasions. Over here, we have two dots for the value of zero, two observations for the value of zero. We see that one vehicle was serviced on three occasions. In three of our 30 days month, we have serviced one vehicle. Four vehicles have been serviced on six occasions, on six days out of the month, as we see six dots over here. And typically, as you see, the repair shop services from three to five vehicles per day. 